Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here in the lovely world of raccoons with me, Vanilla Raccoon. Hey yo! And in this episode, we will be saying farewell to spawn for a few reasons. The first being, anything that I do here would be repetitive in terms of content, and two, it wouldn't really be the most entertaining of content that I could produce for you to enjoy. So before we even begin to move on to the next project site, I thought I would go ahead and take this time to become a little more organized. As you can tell within the ender chest right here, we have 19 shulker boxes. Quite recently, I ventured into the end and traveled the deep abyss until I came across an end city and then taking my looting three sword, I was then able to slay enough shulkers to acquire enough shulker shells to create shulker to create 19 shulker boxes. Now seeing as how I am not that good at doing math, if anyone would like to figure out exactly how many shulker shells I had acquired so that I could create the 19 boxes that you see right here, then feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Keep in mind though, in order to create one of these, you only need two shulker shells in a single chest. And again, we have 19 of these bad boys right here. So let's go ahead and take another peek inside the ender chest real quick. So this is my carpenter's box. This is where I'll be storing my wood based materials. My tactical pack is where I'll be storing all of my gear and tools. My stone sack is where I'll be storing my stone based materials. The end city loot as the name states is where I'll be storing the loot that I acquire from raiding any other end city that I come across. Then the ocean monument loot similar to the end city loot is where I'll be storing any loot that I acquire when raiding an ocean monument. And then my nether contents is where I'll be storing anything that I want to bring back from the nether. And then floral accessories is where I'll have my saplings, my bushes, my bone meal, pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, you get the gist I hope. And then right here this gray shulker box. I think this is probably where I'll actually store my armor so then that way we can have two separate tactical packs. One will have our gear and our tools and the other will store our armor in. Well there we have it peeps, we now possess a second tactical pack that we can store all of our armor within and then in the first tactical pack is where we can store all of our tools and weapons. Now you may notice that we have this gray shulker box right here and it may be a little hard to tell the difference between this and the two tactical packs but if you squint your eyes and you look really closely but not too close to the screen you'll see that it's a slightly different color this is where i'll be storing my ores at so when i go mining i could just prop them in right there and then when i break down the ores or smelt them to gather the minerals from within them i can place them within the same shulker box now you may be able to tell that we're no longer at spawn, and in fact, we are no longer in the overworld. This is going to be the new project site. We're going to be working here on the main island within the end, and the reason why is because, well, I wanted to do something different in regards to having a new project to work on within the lovely world of raccoons. And this project is inspired by Zloy XP. For those of you who don't know who Uncle Zloy is, he is a member of the Sidely Vanilla, and when I was a member of the Sidely Vanilla back during Season 3, he was working on a base out off of one of the end islands that you can get to by casting an Ender Pearl into the wind and hoping that it lands through the end gate that appears after fighting an Ender Dragon. However, when he and I spoke in the DMs, he said that he didn't really make much progress on that project. However, he did start up the same project over on the beautiful Division modded SMP. Now over there, he's made a lot more progress than he did during Season 3 of the Sidely Vanilla. But at least I thought, you know, let's go ahead and look at what a fellow content creator slash peep had done in a previous season on a SMP and just take that idea and make it and make something of it of our own at least, if that makes any sense. Now, with this new project comes, at least in my opinion, a challenge or two. The first challenge is that under no circumstances am I allowed to place a pumpkin on my head at any point in time. 
So that means one thing I'm going to want to do right off the bat is begin to create a few water channels that go along the obsidian obelisk that we have right here. So if and when I accidentally make eye contact with an enderman, I can just quickly seek refuge within the water channel because enderman can't swim and so they're just going to sit off to the side and be like, it's okay fool, I'll wait for you to come out when you're ready. So you may also be able to notice that the Endermen have this metallic silver texture to them. I thought if I'm going to be working out here in the deep dark abyss, I want to make sure that I can at least see the Endermen and helping me not be able to accidentally make eye contact with them. So that's why they have this metallic texture to them. And then of course, just to help tell them from their surroundings, we also changed the texture of the eyes so that they are a sky blue. Now I was considering on changing the texture of their surrounding particles, but then I thought we could possibly keep it as it is and then use this to our advantage in, in establishing some lore for the Endermen and our new project area. As to what the lore is yet, I'm not entirely sure what it's gonna be, but I'll leave that up to you to let, help me with in the comment section down below. So what I think I'm gonna do now is begin to work on said water channels, lay down some grass and soil blocks so then we can have some land to begin growing our crops within, and then when I bring it back, we'll have a little bit of a progress update. Well, here we are standing on top of the obsidian platform that we'll land on when we go through the end portal. And I thought I would just take this time to point out that precisely 100 blocks behind the obsidian block that I'm standing on is where I'll be constructing my Ender Ender 2.0. Now, this is a project that I do plan on working on during stream, so that way, one, I can work on a project during stream, and two, have the privilege to sit down and chat with you. Now, if we were to just begin to walk along the pathway that extends from the obsidian pillar platform, not pillar, you'll see that it then meets up with an oak stairwell and it is baby proof so I don't have to worry about accidentally walking over the ledge so to speak. But right here on the left side, we do have a water channel. Now, you'll notice that we have a chorus flower that is not growing. That is because we have a single piece of string placed on top of it. And the chorus flowers are gonna be acting as points of interest. So when we spot one, we'll walk up to it, we'll go, oh look, a pretty little flower. And then we'll notice all the other crops that are growing. And as we continue to make our way up and down the pathway here, we'll see another little wild chorus flower and go, oh look, another pretty little flower. And then we'll notice the other crops that are growing nearby. Now we do have a small little moat surrounding the obsidian pillar right here. And that is mainly because if and when I resummon the Ender Dragon, once I break the cage and if I get knocked back due to exploding the Ender Crystal, or maybe I am able to safely do so, but I need a way out and get back down to ground level, I can just safely land within the surrounding water right here. Now on the right side here, we have another water channel and we have another moat surrounding this obsidian pillar as well. And pretty much the same thing applies over here with this water channel in that as we continue to walk up and down the pathway here, we'll see a wild chorus flower. We'll go, oh look, another little pretty flower. And then we'll see all the other crops that are growing nearby. Now, just for the sake of decorational purposes, I thought I would take a chorus flower, plant it down, and then with time and patience, it then began to grow into the chorus tree that you see right here. And I don't plan on chopping them down for more chorus flowers. I do plan on setting up a proper chorus flower farm, but I may do so out within the outskirts of the main island here. So at this point now, what I would like to do is take a little break from working on establishing water channels around the obsidian pillars and begin to work on little 
trails that wrap around the obsidian pillars pillars so that way then when i do have to fight the ender dragon again i can just begin to run up the spiral trail and then safely make my way to the ender crystals and then from there i'll hopefully be able to break them without any issues and then move on to the next one well unfortunately ladies and gentlemen it is just about that time where we must begin to wrap things up and say farewell to one another however before we do just that i thought i would go ahead and show you what i've done in regards to establishing the hiking trails that wrap up and around the obsidian pillars that we have right here now whilst i was constructing them i will admit i did accidentally glance at an enderman but seeing as how we have the moats just at the base here, I was able to safely jump into them. And then with my diamond sword, I was able to go swoosh, 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 and then put them on the back of a milk carton. Now, what I'm thinking at this point in time is that in a future Minecraft livestream, aside from working on the Ender Ender 2.0, I would like to establish a hiking trail around the remaining obsidian pillars that we have just along here. And then we'll probably in the near future resummon the Ender Dragon and do that on stream like I did for my first Ender Dragon fight here in the lovely world of raccoons. Now, as promised, the first official world download for World of Raccoon Season 2 will be made available. And in the description box down below, you'll be able to find a link to it. So what I would like to see you do is if you do download this lovely world, then take a screenshot of what you like most about it and send it to me over on Twitter or share it with me in my Discord server. Once again, a link to my Discord server along with all my other social medias can be found in the description box but like i said ladies and gentlemen it's time to say farewell so if you enjoyed this video then be sure to leave it a like and if you're new to the channel then i invite you to check out the rest of it but do not forget to turn on notifications when subscribing that way you will then be notified when future minecraft and other gameplay content is uploaded from yours truly vanilla raccoon but i would like to wish you all a happy day and peace out